Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm really excited for today's guest. We don't always get this kind of super intelligent startup helping VC accelerator like guest. But before we talk to our guest, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co host, Six Sigma. You know him. You love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the landing. Scott Todd, are you excited? I am very excited, Mark. I feel like um, we're going to get a lot smarter in the next 30 to 40 minutes. What do you think? I think so too. I know it. I know it. I just want to remind all the listeners, today's podcast is sponsored by GeekPay.io. It is the only automated financial CRM in the country. A set it and forget it system. You're going to get paid either way. ACH, credit card, credit card, ACH. If one fails, it's going to charge the other one on file. Your customers are going to love it. They're going to know their current balance. It's going to save you time. It's going to save you money. GeekPay.io. Kevin Siskar is our guest today. Kevin, if you don't know who he is, is a managing director of the Founder Institute in a little metropolitan called New York. He has built a portfolio of over 80 early stage companies. And in 2016, he was named best startup ecosystem developer in the entire Founder Institute network, which is a global network across over 150 cities. Kevin is the host of the Ambition Today podcast where he explores the hardships and heroism of entrepreneurs, creators, investors, and builders who ambitiously change the world. You can find him on siskar.co, talking startups, products, technology, and services, and the people who build them. Kevin is also a venture partner at Outbound Ventures, the founder of Brinkway, and a co-founder of New York City Innovative Collection. Kevin Siskar, welcome to the podcast. How are you? Thank you, guys. Hey, Mark. Hey, Scott. Uh, wow. Tremendous, tremendous introduction. Uh, I hope I, uh, I, I live up to the hype. I'm excited to be here. You know, Kevin, the whole rest of the podcast, I'm going to put on my Anchorman voice. Um, you're, I, a big, you're a big deal. I, I love it. I love it. Um, awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to share some, share some lessons. Um, as you mentioned, I am the managing director for the Founder Institute in New York City. We're an early stage startup accelerator. So we help companies at the earliest stages get incorporated, set up, built, and really we help them launch and, and support them long term as they grow to be uh, big, big startup tech companies. So there's two questions first. The, you know, this is a very competitive space, right? We got Y Combinator who are, you know, Paul Graham, all those guys, right? Um, and everywhere in between. Um, the second question is, you know, it's sort of this chicken and egg. You know, number one, I might have, what I think is a good idea, but you might think it sucks, right? So, um, and then the, 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 the other issue is why, you know, Founder Institute and not some other type of accelerator. So it's like, are you selling me? Am I selling you? Are we selling each other? How does this even happen, Kevin? Yeah, definitely. So we're a little different than other accelerators. We operate a lot earlier, right? So if you think about the pipeline, right, you think about like you're maybe have an idea, you're thinking about quitting your job, uh, really kind of breaking out into the world. Um, then maybe you start the company, you start to get some revenue, you release a product, you maybe fundraise uh, your first round, which is your seed round. Um, and you really start to like grow from there. We help companies at the earliest stages. So we'll help people as early as I had an idea. We'll help them get incorporated, built, set up, make that smart jump uh, from being an employee to being an entrepreneur and, and make it in the right way possible, in the best way possible. Um, and, you know, other accelerators are, are more like seed accelerators. So they sit more uh, by that seed round. So you've already maybe got, you know, a few thousand dollars coming in. You've already got a team. You've already got a product in the market. So we help founders a lot sooner uh, is really our differentiator. Um, and to your point around ideas, right? That is, that is also something we kind of take pretty personal is, is we believe uh, in founders, right? So we do a lot of things around finding the best founders. And we really believe that if you have the best founders, uh, and a great idea is important, right? But the best founders will build a great company regardless of the idea. Well, well let's talk about that. What makes a great founder, especially someone who ma majored in cognitive neuroscience. I almost feel like you're inside my head. Get on my head, yeah. Kevin. Yeah, basically. Um, and so 
you know, it's interesting, right? Because uh, in some ways I, I never ex- expected it, but that degree is almost a little bit relevant. We like to look at people's personality uh, and we actually built a proprietary psych test to benchmark that. So we have mentors like, you know, Scott Hefferman of meetup.com and um, Elon's, Elon Musk is actually an ex- uh, a mentor out in the Valley. Um, and so we've basically benchmarked these guys' personality traits. They've taken this test we've built, we've benchmarked what makes a great entrepreneur, uh, and we kind of, we give that test to people thinking about joining Founder Institute, and we see where they fall in line, right? So some things we're looking for that, that make a great entrepreneur. Uh, fluid intelligence is incredibly important. And what I mean by fluid intelligence is it's a little different than IQ. It, IQ is really just kind of how smart you are. Fluid intelligence is your ability to when you come up against an obstacle or a new set of rules, how quickly can you learn that new rule set, adapt and overcome it, right? And that's really a lot of what entrepreneurship is about. You, you know, you solved a team problem and then a fundraising problem comes out and then a product problem comes out. And, and so, you know, every time a new thing hits you, how quickly can you learn, adapt and overcome it uh, is really one of the main, main things we look for in, in our entrepreneurs. And then there's a, there's a few other things as well. Um, moderate agreeableness. So you don't want to actually agree with everyone all the time. If you're an entrepreneur, you want to be able to be in the middle and hear people out. Um, and so high openness is another thing we look for. And these are kind of, these are like the big five personality traits um, that, you know, have been studied and, and go back uh, quite a bit in psychology. Scott Todd, what do you think? Okay. So, um, so I, I come to you, I've got an idea. I, I take a test right? Uh, you guys are looking to see if it's a good fit for, for, for you. And assuming that it is, what happens next? Yeah, sure. So uh, you, uh, you take the test. Uh, in a city like New York, you would have an interview with me. Um, between the two of those, we would make an admissions decision. Uh, if we admit you, you would join the accelerator. Uh, we typically start with about 30 people in a cohort and we'd usually graduate around 10 of that. And so we're a little unique as well between these other stories because we run the program bootcamp style, meaning that if you're not keeping pace with the program or maybe you decide you actually don't want to be an entrepreneur or you've got a raise or you're having a kid or, or life happens, right? Um, you're invited to come back at a later date and kind of give entrepreneurship another shot when it, it may be fitting uh, your, you know, your life a little bit better. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And then through those, through once you're in, uh, it's a 14 week program, right? So we basically take those mentors that we built the test with, right? We bring them in for dinners every every Wednesday night, once a week, um, and you hear from them firsthand, right? So most of our mentors are CEOs, operators, founders, people that have been through the trenches and, and felt the pains of starting a company. And it can really give back from firsthand experience and what they've learned. And so they do that every week uh, with a different set of mentors. They'll hear you pitch. They'll give you feedback on your pitch. Uh, they'll give you a, a one, two, four, five, no threes, because threes are cop outs in our opinion. <laughs> <laughs> And, and yeah, and then we'll do Q&A and then usually we all kind of go hang out afterward and you get some one-on-one time with, with the mentors. It's a very cool model. It's a very cool model. Um, if, you, if you were starting a business today, Kevin, what's the first thing that you would do? So the first thing I would do is cancel my Netflix subscription. Okay, okay why? Well, just because so often, I, you know, you see, you see founders kind of sitting around or waiting around or, or, or they need this one more thing or they, they just, you know, if I only had a technical co-founder, if I only had, you know, a developer, I could, I could, my magical ideal just disappear. And it's like, there's so many things you could be doing meanwhile. Right. And so, you know, you just need to be scrappy and get started and not sit around, not sit around and wait. You need to just go. And, you know, most importantly, like, once you get going, that's really what's going to start informing your decision making and really help you find, you know, product market fit with a, with a great, a great company uh, launching a new space. Right. So um, that, that's my number one piece of advice is, is just get going. Right. And um, at the worst case, even if it doesn't work out, you're going to have learned a ton. Yeah. I mean, 
Okay, so let's say I'm learning and going and doing, right? It's such a noisy world today. Everybody's distracted. I mean, I, I don't know about Scott. I have the attention span of a ferret on a double cappuccino, right? <laughs> How do you break through as a, as a founder through all the noise and get traction in today's marketplace? So that's a little tricky, right? I think, I, I, and I by no means think it's impossible. I actually think it's more realistic than people assume um, if you do the right things. And I think one of the things that matters most is, especially in the world of entrepreneurship, is self-awareness. Not enough people are being real with themselves. Not enough people are understanding, you know, what are the limitations of their own anxiety? What are the limitations of their personal life? Um, And really optimizing um, all the hours they have to be working. Um, And so... I think, you know, having a rigid self-awareness really helps you. That, that is your unfair advantage over other founders, right? That, and when you couple that with a strong work ethic, you really start to see founders that quickly excel and, and blow by the rest of them. Um, and so having those real talks with yourself, um, seeking outside advice, because that's most often when you get that advice, right? Like your family loves you. They're not going to always tell you um, that's stupid or, or this is what you really need to do or, or yeah, like I hear you, like you want to launch the startup, but you also just watched three seasons of, you know, uh, Game of Thrones. Like, what are you doing? Right? And so, um, you know, get going and, and have the self-awareness to hold yourself accountable. I love it. I mean, I think, Mark, I think that, uh, you know, not, uh, I mean, in a way, I think that that's what we also do with like flight school, right? Like, so Kevin, we have a training program called flight school where it's, it's uh, like, let's say it's a 10 week program where, you know, people are, are executing in real time. And I think what it does is it forces them to take action. And then, then people decide, uh, you know, man, I got to do this or, uh, you know, or I've got to give up. I got to give up Netflix or I got to get better at scheduling my time. Uh, so that, that, that's really the, I think the value of, of it is that somebody is there in your face saying you have to execute, let's do this now. Or there's another option. The other option is you got to reprioritize your time and your, and your, your decision-making. Yeah. And we have an entire curriculum that goes along with these mentoring sessions. And so, um, you get kind of conditioned across the 14 weeks to, to adjust your schedule and, and learn how to, you know, structure your time and, and go after and prioritize the right things. Um, and so by the time you leave, you're kind of in that, right? And that you've kind of kicked the flywheel and the engine is revving and running. All right, Kevin, you're in New York City. You're going to go to dinner, okay? Because let's face it, New York's probably got the, you know, maybe, maybe San Francisco's one. New York might be too. Some of the best restaurants in the world. All right. You're going to take, first of all, I want to know what restaurant you're going to take them, but you're going to take three mentors in business and you can pick any three that you want in the world. Okay. So it's the four of you to dinner. You get to ask each one of them one question. So the first question is, where are you going to dinner? Whom are you bringing? And what are you asking? Okay. All right. Let me see if I can, I can remember all that. So I'm going to cop out on the restaurant because uh, we're in startup world and we don't, we don't have money to eat at uh, Michelin star restaurants. Um, but I think everyone who's listening, if you're in New York city, you should order a company called craft and saver, which is one of our portfolio companies. Uh, they make incredible at home delivery. Uh, and that's kind of, uh, you know, showcasing a little bit of, of the companies we, we kind of work with. Um, so I would order Craft and Saver, and I would have over for dinner uh, Chris Saka, who's a famous investor of Uber. He's on Shark Tank. Um, they have to be uh, can they have to be alive or dead? Alive, alive. All right. So Steve Jobs is out. Uh, then I guess Elon. Uh, I find what Elon Musk is doing fascinating. Uh, and lastly, who would my last one be? My last one. Uh, I'm gonna come back to my last one. So I would ask Chris Saka, um, is, is being a, was it hard to become a billionaire? As was it recently hard to become kind of a billionaire? Him, taunt, him and Mark Cuban kind of, yeah, because I, and, I, and I, I, I'm anticipating his answer to be saying, be no, that, you know, there really is, you know, 
there's not a perfect formula, but there's a lifestyle that you can cultivate. You can do the right things in the right order. You can set yourself up for success and, and, and accomplish the goals if you play, you know, the long game, right? 20, 30, 40 years. Um, and so I would, I would ask Chris that and, and get his feedback on that. I would ask Elon. Uh, dude has like no chill. I guess I just want to know like how, why he just, you know, why not just do the space thing? Why Tesla? Why the boring company? Why Hyperloop? You know, guy just keeps going. And I guess I would be curious to ask Elon what he thinks of the rest of us that are, you know, everyone else that's launching social apps and, you know, uh, you know, maybe another dating app or something. Why aren't they just changing the world in, in a bigger way? And, and in, and in many ways, I'm excited because I think that is where investments and startups are going in the next few years. Do you, do you think he'd be judgy? No, I don't think so. I don't. Th- I don't think he. I don't think he would be. Uh, I I I have friends that know him, and I've heard he's. I've heard he's pretty calm. It's pretty cool. So what what do you think he would say? I think I think he would say that um, people aren't. You know, he's he's an engineer. He's with a physics degree, right? And not enough people are kind of exposed to the sciences to really kind of understand and pursue that stuff. Uh, the guy taught himself how to build rockets, right? And like anybody else could teach themselves to build rockets. I really don't think it's an information issue in 2017. I think it's an, it's an applied effort issue, right? Um, and so again, you really just need great people who are scrappy and have the fluid intelligence and really can just get after and, and, and fix these things. Do you, do you think that people don't think big enough like Elon Musk? They don't have these sort of, um, you know, thousand X type of goals. Yeah, totally. I think that not enough people think exponentially, but I also don't think that's like their fault. Right. I think we live in an education system where, um, you know, it you you were it were, you were meant to learn how things work in 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 an era when everyone went and got blue collar blue collar jobs and worked on assembly lines and manufacturing was big and and to succeed at that, I think thinking outside the box, really becoming like the titans of our time, is like it's not it's not a normal way of thinking. Um, it's a it's a different mindset kind of altogether. So I think he would say, but I, he would say that, but I think he there's also ways to to become that. Right. And I think you expose yourself to the right stuff. You listen to great podcasts, right? I mean, this is 2017, literally anything you want to do, you could go find that niche on the internet and just start absorbing that knowledge and plugging yourself into the culture and, you know, getting to meet people in the industry like you're like yourself or whatever industry that is. You know, Scott, I, I think the problem is, is, a, is abundance. I almost feel like when you can have anything and you can learn anything, and you can do anything, you end up doing nothing because it's so hard to choose. And if you don't choose, which is actually a choice, you can't fail, right? You kind of protect that identity. What do you think? Well, I, I agree. I think that, um, I think that at some point in time, it's, it's hard to draw the line in the sand and, and decide who, who you want to become and who you want to be, right? You know, like, uh, you know, I, I, I look at you and, you know, you, you have set out on this mission, the land geek, right? Like you, you've, you've proclaimed yourself the land geek and that's what you go and you pursue and you, you, you take it to the, to the end. Okay. But then other people will look at it and they're like, well, man, I could do land and I could do this and I could do that. There's too much to do. And instead of just drawing a line in the sand saying, this is what I'm going to do and this is where I'm going to put my time. And this is the the difference that I'm going to make. It's like, well, let me let me leave it open. Yeah, and what's what's interesting is that you know, like you and I both agree with this, Scott. I'm sure Kevin agree. You know, we're not in the business of buying and selling raw land. We're in the freedom business. That's our business. Is how do we create more time for ourselves? And it just so happens that we've analyzed a lot of different ways to do it, and we like this one the best for various reasons, right? Um, but that's really our business. So. Kevin, but you, but you took the, you guys took the time to take that step back and, and decide that, right. And, and make that, make that dedicated decision. And, and, you know, it shows, right. And, and you, you now have achieved that, uh, which not many people take the step back to do. So, uh, definitely something that people need to be self-aware about. Yeah. What do Kevin, what do most people do? 
I think most people just, most people kind of just hang out and uh, wait for an opportunity to sort of hit them and, and maybe they'll take it and maybe they won't. And, and, and I'm as guilty of that myself, right? I've had great opportunities fall in my lap and, and fear, the fear can be paralyzing, right? Um, and you have to kind of over time just get to know, you have to build up that stomach and that gut which is what great entrepreneurs do um, to, to, to recognize opportunity when it hits you and, and be able to jump on it when, when you can. Is there something that you believe about business that other people think are nuts? Something I believe about business that other people think are nuts. I really do believe that um, the, bo- like, the body does follow the mind and the mind also follows the body right and i think that um people too often feel like they're just swaying in the wind um and don't realize that they they can control their future and their life and their destiny and they just need to take the step back really focus and it's not going to be comfortable by any stretch of the imagination at first but it will become comfortable over time Scott Todd, what do you th- what do you think? I mean, I, I mean, like you know, uh, Mark. So here, you know, here you have like a guy like Grant Cardone, right? And Grant Cardone is constantly saying, like, "Hey, it's the weekend. What are you doing out at the beach? Forget the beach. Forget you know. Forget the beer. Don't go out tonight. You know, don't go out on Friday or Saturday night. Stay at home. Work on your business." And a lot of people look at that and they're like, "Well, man, um, well, that's not going to happen." Or I, I want to watch Netflix <laughs> or do whatever, right? And it just comes back to to um, prioritizing, you know, kind of what's important to you, right? Because so, so I, I will say this to follow up on that. I agree with the hard work ethic, not watching Netflix, all that stuff. But I do think that if you're not doing it for family, you're doing it for probably the wrong reasons. I think that I, I don't know the answer yet uh, to what the perfect match of that is, but I think you need to put family first uh, and, and work super fucking hard. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, I, I do think like, to me, I think that, um, I think that you've got, you've got to take care of your financial being. You've got to create the work that you want to do because if you don't want to do it and you go through life miserable and you know, you're, you, you can't take another day. Well, then you're not doing your family justice because your family will, will feel the impact of that. Oh, I hate my job. You won't have the quality of the relationships that you want. Uh, whether your family, your kids, whatever it is, because you're miserable as opposed to, okay, now I'm going to, I'm going to put my head down and for the next two, three years, whatever it is, I'm going to work super hard, laser focus. I'm going to get really good at this one thing. And then I can go back and rebuild those relationships. And you know, that's the priority is I got to do this. And sometimes that's, sometimes that's a victory too, right? Like that's why we start a cohort of Founder Institute with 30 people and graduate 10 sometimes is you realize entrepreneurship isn't for you. And, and to be honest, that's a win as well, right? If you don't train your child's college account or your own savings account and, and you realize like, hey, I actually really do like my current lifestyle and what I'm doing, that's, that is just as big a win as you know, maybe starting a company and becoming a successful founder. It really is finding the right lifestyle for, that works for you. So my, my son's 16 years old and he, he wants to be an entrepreneur. And, um, you know, of course I, I want to guide him the best way I, I know how, but if I go to uncle Kevin, I say, look, you gotta go, you gotta go talk to uncle Kevin in New York. What would uncle Kevin, what advice would you give my 16 year old son right now? I would tell him to just get started. Um, I don't, you know, maybe it's a lawn mowing business. Maybe it's, you know, um, it's, it's whatever, but you know, there's simple ways, right? Like go into, uh, ask, ask you for maybe 25, $50, right? Go to a Starbucks, get a bunch of $5 gift cards, stand outside that Starbucks, right? Whether it's in the mall or wherever and be like, Hey, I want, I have this idea, right? Like, um, would you, for $5 gift card, would you give me feedback on it? Right. And you've already got the coffees right behind you. They just, of course they're going to, yeah, they're going to help. First of all, he's got age on his side, right? So they're going to love him. They're going to love the young hustle. 
They're going to, uh, you know, want to help him. They're going to take the $5 gift card, go grab coffee, and he's going to start to get feedback, right? And talk to customers and, and start to figure out what works. And um, yeah, I guess like that would be probably be my, like my quick, my quick step. Yeah. It's so funny how much we, we admire the hustle, right? And I don't think I, I don't know, maybe cause I'm, I'm in my garage office all day. I don't see it enough uh, where I live. Honestly, I was talking to a buddy of mine on the airplane. He told me that in college, um, he'd go to his favorite restaurant and there's like lines out the door, right? Think, think like soup Nazi lines, right? And he's in Austin, Texas. And what he would do is he would get up at, you know, they would open at 10 and start lining up. I love, I love the Seinfeld reference, by the way. Yeah, yeah. So he'd, he'd get there at 930 and, you know, he, he would start hustling and say, look, I will, I will order your meal for you. You can have my spot. I'll order your meal. You just got to buy my lunch plus like whatever. And he'd yeah. just have free lunch every day as a college kid at his favorite restaurant. I love that hustle. That's amazing. And, and it's only in doing, you know, weird things like that, that you start to find where the value is in the world and how you can trade it up and down and, and how it works. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I, Kevin, we're at that point in the podcast now where we're going to put you on the spot. And your, your mentorship has been amazing, by the way. But Thank now you. we're going to ask for you one more little piece of value, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? So we've talked a lot about self-awareness and, uh, you know, personality and a lot of like how to be a great person really. And, and how that translates into starting a great business and, and, and income, passive income, active income, et cetera. Um, there's, you know, and you mentioned my degrees in neuroscience. So I think understanding how people tick plays a lot, plays a, a big role into, into, you know, navigating this world. So I would check out a book called Sapiens. Uh, it's a brief history of humankind. And I, I love, it's some of my favorite books. Uh, it's awesome. Yuval Noah Harari. I just, I, I'm, I'm almost done with Homo Deus. Have you, are you reading it? Uh, not yet. I'm, I'm like uh, three fourths the way through Sapiens. Oh, you love Homo Deus. Okay, go ahead. All right. I will, I will, I'm going to check that out next. Um, Sapiens basically is like, you know, a brief history of, of humankind. And when you start to just, when you take people off the pedestal, like, like forget putting, Mark Cuban, Trump, anyone on a pedestal, right? We're all humans. We all have brains. Put everyone on the same level and the world becomes much clearer when you start to think about what actually makes them different. Yeah, I actually, I mean, I mean as much as I'm loving Sapiens, or I love that book. It's one of my favorite books of all time. I'm really loving Homo Deus. All right, that's awesome. I got to check it out. Yeah, yeah. You know how like in every chapter in Sapiens, it's like just mind-blowing, expanding the way like it's things you kind of know, but then like he, he writes about it in a, in a different way. Yeah. Like um, a super high level macro. Super way. high level. Like, like every like other line in Homo Deus is like that. It's crazy. That's Scott, amazing. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, autoresponders, man. Like we, we always need autoresponders, right? Like we always need ideas for what to put in ours and how, how to get them to convert and how to, how to onboard people, right? So check out emaildrips.com. Oh, Have you seen email this? Emaildrips.com. Emaildrips.com. Kevin, are you familiar with it? I am not, but I, uh, I love autoresponders. I'm a big fan of uh, Tim Ferriss's four-hour work week, and that that's, plays a big role in that. Yeah. So basically what they've done here is that they have gone through like all of these different trials and card abandonment sequences and everything. They've recorded them and they're all on here, emaildrips.com. You know, I love the site. And basically you can search by, okay, do I want to look at a webinar? Well, then I can go to the webinar. Do I want to look at card abandonment? Let me go over there. Do I want to look at a tripwire? Let me look over there. And then you can follow along or onboarding. Uh, you can go over there and then you can get ideas for your own email auto responder series. Yeah. And you know, these are all big, big marketers in here too. Right. They're yeah. not, these aren't small names. Um, these are sort of like the best of the best in auto respond, in an auto response. Um, this is great. What a great tip, Scott Todd. O- almost as good as my tip, which is going to be learn more about Kevin at Siskar. <laughs> .co. I have a link to it. Siskar.co. And if you are um, interested in, you know, sort of making that transition from your, your cubicle into some amazing 
startup, head out to New York, siskar.co. Kevin Siskar, are we good? We're good. Yeah. If you're interested, uh, check out the Founder Institute. We're uh, in, in cities all over the world. And um, if you want to uh, check out what some of the mentors from Founder Institute are like, I interview them for my podcast, Ambition Today. So uh, everywhere that podcast exists, I guess. <laughs> all right. Fantastic. Uh, Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. All right. I want to just thank all the listeners and remind them the only way we're going to get the type and quality of guests like a Kevin Siskar is if you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast, send us a screenshot of your review to support at the We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. Uh, again, I want to remind everybody to go to geekpay.io as well and start automating your collections. Um, Scott, are we doing this or, you know, this is, this guy's in New York founder Institute. Are we really going <laughs> to, no, I say we, we, have to pass, I, we have to pass it. I just say it. <laughs> Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. All right. That was actually pretty good. <laughs> it's not bad. All not right. bad. Thank, Thank you for everybody. having me. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks Kevin. All right.